flying future in the sky can make the moon sun at midnight. The idea behind this fancy title was the flaky tests. That due to flying futures that share uh, resources, guess about what I'm going to talk today. Future. Yeah? Concurrency. And thank you, uh, first of all, for, thank you all for uh, coming and thanks to the organizers for this opportunity. So our journey today, we are going to cover the difference between parallelism and concurrency and how could we describe parallel computations. Then we are going to see which kind of issues that we can face in uh, concurrent programs, then how could we solve them? And to make this talk interesting, I'm going to talk about zero. Parallelism and concurrency, those, t those terms are very familiar for us as programmers because we want to improve the user experience to have a better uh, application, we provide better uh, uh, applications for, with high performance and uh, that are responsive. So, but it's very important to differentiate between parallelism and concurrency. Parallelism is the way to use the capability of your hardware that to make it possible to run simultaneous tasks at the same time. It's like in the space, there are many planets and each planet has life and all the planets and all lives are living in parallel at the same time. In other hand, concurrency is the way how to coordinate between different tasks running simultaneously but out of order and how to coordinate with them to have, uh, without affecting the final results. Back to the space. At any point in time, any planets can be hit by the ray of the sunlight. To make it clearer, parallelism is doing many things at once or executing multi-tasks simultaneously. This provides high performance and this is very uh, according to your hardware. But concurrency is dealing with many things at once and communicating with different tasks that are running out of order and the ability to have a correct result. We will understand this more for a hardware with four cores, we can run parallel, uh, parallel tasks and all of them will be uh, simultaneously executing in uh, the GVM. And concurrent tasks will be executed all together but out of order. So because the scheduler will will decide which task will be executed at any point in time and the scheduler is a part of the operating system. So we, it, concurrency is uh, tricky because of this, because no one can know your, which task will be executed at any point in time. And for, in case if you have a hardware with one core, you cannot achieve parallelism. You cannot say I have parallel tasks, one task running in parallel. No, it doesn't make sense. And uh, the hardware will not enable you to have parallel computations. But you can achieve concurrency in one core and the tasks will interleave each others and execute every instructions, but uh, not uh, out of order. How could we describe concurrent programs? In the GVM, the 
the method is to use threads to uh, execute parallel computations that are managed by a scheduler. For example, here, task has two uh, instructions, and, and then we have two tasks running together, and, and then when we execute this program, we will see different results. This, like, it's a simple program, but with print line, we can at least see the result and how could we have out of order result. So we see that we start the first thread and then the second th thread will enter leave and will start its first instruction. And, and then uh, it, uh, it continue it, it back to the other thread and uh, back again to the second thread to finish the second instruction. And if you run it again, you will have different result, different order. And uh, even sometimes the task two might start before the task one, but always we start uh, with the first instruction. So this is call it execution order, and it depends to the number of your instructions in the code and the number of the threads are, are running. And the possible execution paths are defined by, you can define by, uh, after you see this equation, uh, it is from uh, the uh, clean code book, um, I cannot say it in English, uh, n t factorial sur n factorial à la puissance t. Uh, it's, uh, the n is the number of the instructions and the t is the number of threads. So in our case, we have two instructions and two threads. So we want to have six possible results. But in a case, if we have tasks that are not related, they are not using shared resources, we will not have any problem with this, we will use the capability of our hardware, and it's okay if our, uh, our code, uh, our uh, tasks enter leave uh, these instructions, no problem. So, but we should consider, if we want to define our parallel computation in threads, the threads are very expensive because one thread maps to one operating system thread. And imagine, uh, so you can see the number of your, the cores that available in your uh, machine for, your, for the GVM. Imagine if you have four cores, so you have, you can only have four uh, threads, you can only create four threads and you will use the whole resources in your machine. And imagine if you have 100 or 1,000 tasks running in parallel, this will be very, very, very expensive operation and it's not a very good uh, thing that you can imagine because you want to achieve high performance but you make your hardware very uh, doing an expen expensive uh, tasks. So this is why there are, we, can, uh, we can describe uh, uh, our uh, parallel computations and make them, uh, send them to an executor service. And, in, uh, and this executor service, we, uh, those tasks will be submitted to the thread pool. And thread pool is like a, is a blocked queue that that is specified by you. You can decide how much thread you can use in your computer, and um, and this thread pool will take the tasks submitted to the executor service and run them one by one and all together. And um, and uh, uh, after executing each task, we, they will take the next one and uh, etc. So how to do this? You. Uh, describe, you uh, define your executor service and you can create a new fixed thread pool, for example. This is the simplest uh, thing. You specify the number of the thread that you want to use uh, to, ha to, uh, to uh, take your um, parallel computations 
and then submit them all to this executor uh, service. So now you, you, uh, you know how to save the uh, resources using a thread pool and there are many different types that uh, it depends to your use cases. The, the thread pool and threads are usually used in Java, but because Scala standard library offer as a data type called future that enable us to describe our parallel computation. So we can just call future and wrap uh, the, uh, this, uh, our parallel computation inside this future. And, and it's the same example here, but it's, uh, the future requires an, execute, uh, an execution context that to understand how, which strategy the thread pool would be uh, uh, do the work for your uh, uh, a parallel computation. So, so by default, you import the global execution context, but you should, you should think that this global uh, execution context will use the whole capability of your hardware, will use the, the, the number of uh, the cores available in your machine. So the performance of the program will depend to your CPU. But it's okay, there is a solution that to override your execution context with uh, the thread pool that you can choose. And futures are composable. You can use flat map and map. You can pass futures to another function. And this makes it uh, good to write uh, functional code. But futures, sadly, are not referential transparent because if you, in the left hand, this program is sequential. And in the right hand, if we define, make, the future in uh, different values and then call them in uh, for comprehension, we will have parallel programs, which it, it change the behavior of your program. So this will make your futures flying. So this is the idea behind flying future when I say flying future, but it's okay, you can make them lazy so now you have, you have, uh, you have, diff uh, you have uh, uh, same program, the same meanings, but you shouldn't forget to make uh, the future lazy. So it requires uh, to think about that. But let's not think uh, a lot about this problem, and let's see which kind of problems that we can face in uh, concurrent programs. Flying futures in the same sky can make the moon sun at midnight. Imagine if a sun is running in a future and the earth is running in another future and the moon also running in a separate future. And all of them are sharing a mutable state that take the sun, the moon and the earth state. The Earth will compute its state using the sun and the moon state, and the moon will compute the state using the sun state. One day at maybe, let's say, 11.58 p.m., the moon wanted to change the state, and the sun at the same time changes its state and then the Earth wanted to take at midnight, wanted to take the, the current state and change the Earth state, but it takes a wrong state. How this will happen, it's a race condition, because at the same time when we change mutable shared state, we will not have, we will not take both of the change and the race condition was due to the moon wanted to change its state, but the sun took the uh, one 
and, and the earth take the state of the sun. So the, sign, the sun shine at midnight, which doesn't make sense. This is a problem. And this problem is because of mutable state. The devil is in mutable state. So to understand more, the memory, the Java memory architecture has for, uh, for a CPU with four cores, each core will um, communicate or will perform the operations uh, with, uh, and send them to registers. And then when, when, um, when the, the shared state in, uh, uh, when the shared state changes in the local cache, it will uh, send to the main memory and the different thread that is running in the, a different core will, take, will fetch the shared state from the main memory and, uh, and, and so on. This is the process that, that is happening, but the store operation takes more time, is more expensive than load operation. To see that clearer, let's see how this can lead to visibility problem. With a very simple example, imagine we have two futures. They will not do only uh, change the state. Imagine that it does more things and and a store is running in a core one and load is running in core two. Then the state, the current state is zero. And then when we, when we want to store a new state in a store core, at that point in time, load, uh, load will fetch the current state from the main memory at that point in time, the store is very um, heavy. It doesn't uh, come to, uh, it ha hasn't been stored to the main memory. So, uh, so we keep having the state zero and we will have, um, we will have a wrong uh, result. So this is, this is a visibility problem. It might, sometimes it might work, it, you might have uh, you might have correct results, but this is really you should consider visibility problems sometimes when the threads enter leaves and the instructions are uh, running like in, for example, instruction one is running in the thread one and the instruction one is running uh, and the thread two at the same point in time. Um, if the, the thread two wants to get value from the thread one uh, very quickly, we might have this problem. So we should consider the visibility problem. But imagine if, this, if we don't have visibility problem, imagine if we have a state, then we want to increment it. So when we want to increment it, we need to fetch the current value and we have uh, zero, and then we want to add plus one, but at that point in time, we load the state, the current state, and uh, like, exactly like uh, in increment thread, and then we take that uh, state and we decrement, and then we increment uh, in that other state, and we will get a wrong result. This is a, a synchronization problem. Let's cover how could we solve these problems? For visibility problems, we can use the keyword volatile. This will make, we, uh, we will uh, fetch from the main memory after like we, uh, the other thread will wait until, until the update of the change of the first thread uh, has been done and stored it to the main memory to fetch it and, uh, and get the recent uh, value in uh, the second thread. But if we solve the visibility problem, we will not solve the synchronization problem because synchroni synchronization problem is not only visibility, it will get, even it will get the current state, um, it might change, two threads might change the same state 
and uh, we should wait for the first change and to get the second change. And this is exactly what happened with the Earth and uh, the Sun uh, state and the Moon state. So we can solve this problem by using synchronized or by using atomic reference that will, uh, for example, you want to increment that will have, uh, it offers methods that atomically update and get your um, your uh, uh, mutable state, but you should consider that to do that in one instruction, because you should consider the interleaving of, uh, between the threads, and also you can use countdown latch or locks and, or semaphores, but this will affect the performance for sure, but this, you should do that because to avoid problems uh, due, uh, if you want to uh, provide concurrent programs without problems. So this are, uh, these problems and these solutions are uh, from uh, like the classic Java um, world. There is also a good thing in Scala. There is a functional programming libraries that offer many things and from, from uh, one of them are Zio and Zio offers the capability to the referential transparency that a future doesn't offer, but also it offers how uh, the solution for the problems of mutu uh, mutable shared states. Let's see how. Zio is, uh, for people who doesn't know, Zio is a zero dependency Scala library that helps us to build asynchronous and concurrent programs using purely functional code. And it, uh, it is possible to make your program functional, even it uh, interact with the outside world, it will just wrap it in a data type, make it as a description, and then at the end of the day you can run it. But only when you decide. You can control your effects using the I.O. in Zio, and the I.O. models synchronized, uh, synchronous and asynchronous code, and, and the main, the main, um, the main uh, program in, uh, in Zio is running in Fiber, and Fiber is built in Zio. Fibers is um, uh, models running I.O. value and if you have asynchronous code or, or parallel computations, you can make them running in many fibers and many fibers can be executed in one thread and this is also save uh, resources and this is using the thread pool that I talked about it uh, earlier. So how to describe your effectful programs in purely functional way is, is easy to just wrap your code into an I.O. and, and, uh, val, uh, and also with uh, Fred, oh, what is it, uh, with fibers, if you want to uh, run your program in a separate fiber, then the main fiber you just call dot fork and this will create an IO of fiber. Zio is referential transparent as I mentioned it. So here the left program is exactly equal to the uh, right program. They both, both of them are executed sequentially. And when you define a value of type IO, it will do nothing only when you call it. This is the reason why it is referential transparent. And also if you want to run your program in different fibers, you can uh, call dot .fork for every uh, operation. And also it is referential transparent. And there are many things that you can benefit from Zio is to use, for example, collect par all uh, uh, collect all par that uh, enables you to, to put a list of IOs that you want to uh, perform in parallel. So you can put them all together 
and this will be executed internally in different fibers in parallel. So to solve the problem of concurrency, there is a data type called STM built on Zio that provides the ability to atomically commit a series of read and write to your shared resources uh, and a transactional memory because it will put it in a trans inside the transaction when a set of conditions are satisfied. I will, I will um, explain that more. But the data type that describes a transaction called STM, which might fail with any or, uh, or return a uh, value of type A, and inside your transaction, you can define your transactional memory, your, your um, shared state in a TREF of A, and the A is the type of your shared state. This can be read and written uh, inside the transaction. How this works? In the beginning, TREF will, have, will start with an initial state, and during this transaction, it will perform many, uh, the STM will perform many operations that you uh, want to do. For example, you want to update your shared state or get it, etc. And, and during this uh, transaction, if, in case if the transaction fails, it rolls back to the initial state. And in case if, the, if there is different fibers are updating the same TREF, the transaction also will roll back and retries, automatically retries, until, until STM will make sure that there is no race condition. It will make sure that the, co the, the state is synchronized and uh, visible this will solve the problem of, uh, that I mentioned earlier. And also, in STM, you can give, uh, you, in your transaction, you can give a condition that in case if the state doesn't satisfy this, uh, uh, this condition, it can roll back, and then once uh, the state will be changed, it will, uh, uh, STM will perform the whole operations to check again and again the condition if it is satisfied until it succeeds. And then at the end, if everything went well, the transaction will be committed and we will have the final state that contains our state. And this, after we commit, we will have an I.O. And the I.O. will, uh, we, will dis uh, describe our effectful program. This is, let's see how could we do that in solving the problem of uh, the, the solar system. For example, now we have the state. It is the, the, our shared uh, me uh, the memory, transactional memory. So it is TREF state. We will use that in, uh, to change the sun, earth, and moon states. And to compute the sun state, we will uh, compute them inside the a transaction. Just um, uh, STM offer also a simple, you can just define a succeeded, a successful transaction with a simple equation to compute this state, and then take that state and update it using the previous value and, uh, and update it uh, with the result of your transaction. And to make your transactional reference, you can, you can uh, make it with initial, using uh, the initial state to, put, to start with the initial state, but you need to commit this transaction because you need to perform the whole uh, change, the whole state change in parallel, all at the same time in different fibers. So you can call this, um, this method that returns all of them, returns STM transactions, and then commit them and fork them. And this will, in this critical section, 
this, what uh, STM will do now, it will retry until, until one of them, uh, both of them will take, will compute its state and the next, uh, the moon and the sun will compute the state using the recent state and the earth will get or will update its state with correct values. Now we solve this problem with a very simple code and without, because if you think about the business logic and then you think about the concurrency problems that are very, very complicated, you will waste a lot of time. So it's okay to use a library that provides all of these things instead of thinking which critical section that you should synchronize or you should use semaphore or uh, something like this. And we all need to, uh, to continue having concurrent programs. So concurrency is important, but is, it is tricky. So um, uh, it, uh, it helps us to have high performance and responsive programs. And I know that concurrency is complicated. You can check out uh, my uh, blog posts. Sometimes uh, I, I um, posted about, I wrote about concurrency and parallelism. You can also try Zio and Zio STM. And I'm pretty sure you will fall in love with Zio. It's really, really beautiful library. Also, you can, if you want to continue using futures, and you have mutable states, you can use ACA actors. And if you want to, to have, um, uh, like, if you want to uh, code using um, functional programming way, you can use functional programming libraries like Zio, Cats Effects, and Monix. And thank you all for your attention, and I hope that you learned uh, something and you enjoyed this talk.